biggest thing that has like I attribute most to Islam is patience. Being on set is a very, very hectic environment. Through and through, Islam teaches us uh, to be patient. You know, in our day to day lives, we stop and we pray five times a day. That's like literally taking a pause. So AJ Plus, um, you know, uh, what I'm interested to know about um, this platform that we all kind of grew up with um, in the social media age um, is the kind of behind the scenes uh, work ethic. Because I feel like, you know, it's funny because you don't know how much work goes into something that you're going to consume in five, ten minutes. Um, you know, I mean, I think one time, uh, even those like short news stories, I'm, I'm not sure if you're involved in them or not, those short news stories that they do with one or two minute ones. Um, yeah. they, at one point, they were putting credits on them and it was like, 25 names like wow all this work went into so like 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 two minutes so tell us a bit about like the work ethic behind aj plus uh the workflow and where you kind of fit in uh to the work that you do as well specifically yeah so aj plus yeah so i i do think that aj plus was the first to sort of make those like one minute bite-sized things before other organizations kind of got a hold of it um so that used to be like the main sort of work that aj plus did um and pretty much everyone that was on aj uh was on board with that so that's probably why you saw like lots of credits uh but over time aj plus started to sort of venture out into documentaries it's like now we have a field team um they go shoot like 10 15 minute documentaries about specific stories and, and documentary series we also have a, a studios uh branch and we do like uh just recurring shows i'm, I'm in the studios team uh now but i've kind of hopped around when I started, I used to work on those one minute videos and those are, those are wild. <laughs> Cause like it, it matters like down to like the, the word. I mean, we have like, it's, it's a, it's a big team. Like there's, there are uh, associate producers, producers, editors, uh, shooters. There's a copywriting team. There's a fact checking team. Like there's uh, there are a bunch of EPs that can EP like specific things. So it goes down the line through everybody like a one minute video will, will touch everyone. Um, so it's cool. Cause the thing is, the thing with AJ plus that I, that I really, really like is, uh, like the work that we do, uh, is very important work because we are usually telling stories that other news organizations are scared to tell. Like we'll usually say the stuff that no one else will say. And everyone that works there has that in mind. Right. And so everyone tries their best. At whatever they're doing uh because we know that we're usually the odd one out right and as the odd one out like we want to be as good as we possibly can and we want to uh just make our our craft just as good if not better than the others so the work that i'm doing right now at aj plus uh i'm uh on a studio show uh it's called backspace and it's hosted by senna saeed um so it's, I mean, we're a team of three. So it's Senna, uh, the um, producer, Nick, uh, and I. So I handle the, pretty much all of the creative in the show. So we built uh, a set in our studio from scratch. Like we literally went to Home Depot. I, and, I, I saw you behind the scenes. It was, it was really fun. Yeah, really it was fun. like, <laughs> for AJ Plus, like we, we had never really done anything like that. So I'm like, they're like, okay, you have... X amount of budget. I'm like, all right, let's go to Home Depot and just buy like 42 by fours. And they're like, why are you, what, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, so we built like the whole set and that was, that was a really, really cool process because we built it uh, with her character in mind for the show. Hmm. And this is also something that I think is new to AJ plus of like just building things from the ground up because it's, it's inherently a documentary news organization. Right. So uh, bringing this kind of like pretty much all of the, the stuff that I learned as a DP on the side into AJ plus has been really, really cool because we do have a studio. We do have lights. We do have some sense of a, a budget to create things. Right. Um, and so that's the show that I work on. We actually, we have a live lighting change in the middle of the show that's on camera. Um, so the show is about, uh, essentially how, uh, other media has told specific stories, uh, like for example, like how the media talks about Palestine. If you look at all of the articles, if when there are bombings in Gaza, like Palestinian kids die, like kids don't just die, 
they, they're murdered. Um, so we look at all that, we compare uh, lots of different ways that uh, other media has compared us, uh, talked about a specific topic. Uh, and then in the second half, we talk about how it could have been told better. So it's kind of like a solution oriented show, mm -hmm. as opposed to just talking like, oh, you guys did it wrong. It's like, y'all did it wrong. This is how it could have been done better. Uh, and so we go from night in her like living room environment to the daytime as she's starting to explain how we could have done it better. Uh, so that was like a cool uh, little challenge. It's like, it's, it's the little things that like, keep me creatively fulfilled there. Um, so yeah, Asia Plus is awesome. I love the work that we do. It's funny, I was, I was laughing uh, when you were talking about the, the, the process behind uh, those one minute videos, because I remember when I was working at the Muslim Vibe, uh, uh, when I first joined them, uh, my whole pitch to them was, let me, let me try and make it guys like Asia Plus, right? So what I was doing for them in my, in my first year was I was doing those one minute videos uh, that's writing, scripting, editing After Effects, releasing them on social media with the, with the social with the social media. And I was doing those 15 minute documentaries myself. And I was doing article editing. I was doing literally everything. Yeah, and I think that literally, <laughs> oh, that that literally is the 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 the, the, the kind of uh, metaphor for the difference between uh, Muslim organizations and uh, you know professional. I, I think honestly, I think I think it comes down to. It might come down to a few things, but I think budget is, is, is definitely one of the kind of things that comes down to, uh, you know very well that in this industry, money is everything. Someone gives you uh, $10,000 uh, to uh, to uh, create a, a set for them uh, versus $200 and a, a $5 gift card from Home Depot. <laughs> you know, you're going uh, you're gonna to create, you're gonna create something good for them, right? Of course, I, I'm, I'm sure you are. Um, and I think that, that's what's interesting. And I'm also interested to find out just briefly, uh, I feel like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like AJ Plus has moved on from uh, quantity to quality. So I feel like you're more focused now on on specific, like you said, like one show, uh, as opposed to just churning out uh, content. Is is that am I wrong in thinking that, or what's the story in that kind of evolution? No, no, you're right. We've definitely uh, been honing in over the years and just trying to make uh, content that uh, is like easier to digest, but also mo more interesting. Um, and that that goes like on all the facets. So like not just the way that we film something, even like the way that the um, the uh, editorial team will approach a project. They're like, okay, we could do it like this and we could just keep churning out these stories or we can kind of hone in and be like, okay, this is the reason that we're doing this. And it's just gonna be a, a three-part series instead of like, 10 short videos. Um, so there's there's a lot of that going on. Um, there are some really, really smart people that work at AJ Plus and they're always constantly trying to, to hone in. All right, Hasnain, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I have, I mean, I have a bunch of questions, but I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to the whole quality aspect of, of your work, um, being a DP and a cinematographer. Um, you know, one thing that's, you know, we, we spoke about, you know, in the past, several minutes was quality and budgeting right so <clears throat> obviously we all start from the bottom i mean your first dp cinematography project was probably not what it's compared to today so you know like i guess i guess where i'm trying to go with this is like from your beginnings you know low budget you know with limited uh team and and, and whatnot to something like so sorry which you know i saw on your on your website which is a phenomenally well done music video animations and whatnot when it comes to budgeting aspect you know what advice would you give somebody who like myself for example right so because i self-budget and self-fund all my films i don't have that big budget but then how do i get the best quality for my film right so somebody who's seen it all you know for you know what advice would you give somebody like myself so that's kind of the question number one and question number two is making of so sorry like what went into that animation like how like because because people don't understand behind the scenes how much effort how much time it is to make something five minutes actually takes like four days to like film you know <laughs> you know it's just cutting it down and people don't understand that uh you know a lot of my friends are like oh like you know i, I love i like a 10 minute film how long did it take you and i tell them like it took like three days to film like really for 10 minutes i'm like you have no idea so basically that's that's the first aspect is you know 
what advice would you give somebody who's working on a low budget film to have the best quality out there? Um, and then call, and then question number two is, you know, when you get to a stage where you're making something like So Sorry, which is probably a big budget, you know, music video, or so it seems, you know, what went into, into making that? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't even work with massive budgets these days. Like I, most of the, the work that people see, most of the work that like I have filtered and filtered and filtered, and right. then I'm like, okay, this is what people see. Most of that, to be honest, I like did not get paid for and we didn't have any budget for it right um because that's just like you 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 put your best foot forward and and you show people the world like the work that you like to do um and it just so happens that like the coolest work is doesn't pay all too well um, right but the to answer your question about how to get the best quality and like the this like smaller budgets uh it's all about knowing the limitations of your budget and working around that, knowing what access to gear you have, writing around that. Like you're not going to write, you know, a story a story that starts with a massive crane shot if you don't have access to a crane, yeah. um, or like a crazy lighting setup if you don't have access to that. So it's all about like first like understanding like your own limitations, but also um, like from just like a cinematography perspective, understanding like having a very 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 deep understanding of light can drastically change your production. Um, it's only like after you learn about lighting that you realize that cameras don't matter. Um, right. Because you can, like if you're filming something outdoors, there's like a specific time in the day and a specific location facing a specific way. Like it's, it's very like formulaic. Cinematography in general is very formulaic. So kind of learning like that process and like the framework of what makes a good image uh, can lead you to create very very good looking shots with no budget um you know where the windows are in a room which direction you should face facing the corner will always get you the most depth uh reverse side key you know far side keying or it's going to get you like that really nice uh depth in the face because you've got like the shadow nearest the camera uh there are all of like those those little things like that would that'll um just like enhance your project and i think just make you a better filmmaker um and also just working with people that are down to learn as well, because right. you're you're learning, you're screwing things up. Other people are too, um, but it's like this giant machine that is just like constantly getting better. Like especially like when you're doing it with your friends. Like I make a lot of stuff with my friends, and you know we do it all for free because we love doing it together. Um, right. It's passion. And yeah, it's it's passion, man. It's like just trying things out and like. I don't know everyone everyone's trying their best and that's i think that's how like those like the circles in hollywood of the people that always work together i think that's like how it's created um right. like you don't get into that you just it happens like it's like us in 20 years 30 years you know hopefully inshallah i'm trying to be on the yacht in 20 years I'm tired <laughs> okay listen man <laughs> that's the move yeah, so talk to us about So Sorry, the animation, like, how, like what went into that? Because if, if, if the audience is listening and you haven't seen it, you should go on the website and see it. It's actually very phenomenally well, well done. So kudos to you for that. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was, uh, that, was a, that was a very, very big passion project. That's like the piece of work that I'm most proud of, uh, I would say, and I, like, I enjoyed the most in, in working on it. Um, so I made that in Unreal Engine, which is just like a... 3D software, it's, it's used to make video games. So they made Fortnite in Unreal Engine. Um, but these days it's, it's kind of like merging into film and television because there's like the Mandalorian, you've got the LED walls in the background and it's being used to project that. Um, but I made So Sorry um, on like a decent computer and most of those assets are free. So I probably spent like $100 total in, like wow. make, in making it. Um, but it just required Love time. so much, so much time. Yeah. <laughs> so people much don't time. understand, you know, it's, it's the time that it takes to make something. Yeah. It's, so it took me six months to make that, um, working pretty much every day. If I had to average it out, like with traveling and holidays and stuff like that, I probably worked on it five days a week for six months straight. And this is like wow. 
after work, I would stop working at like 6 p.m. And then I would take a little break and get started on that at seven. And I wouldn't sleep till like one or two every wow. single day. And it's just like this slow burn. And most of the time, you don't even want to work on it. <laughs> like most of the time, you're not feeling yeah. feeling up to it. But it's like just getting past that and just doing it anyways. Um, but that was like, uh, so I did everything in that project except for create the actual models, like the model of the character, the model of the trees and the grass. Um, so all of the, the camera work, it happens in the 3D space. So it functions the same way that a real camera would. Uh, same goes for lighting. And so, um, I don't know, I found it to be extremely fulfilling animation in general because you're kind of given um, like a, you can do whatever you want and that's like a good thing, but also a very bad thing uh, because you can very easily kind of go off the rails. Right. You have to, you, you have to really like hone in um, on what you want to do. Uh, and it teaches you a lot about filmmaking in the sense of like, when you put two shots together, just because they look cool, that's not the, you yeah. know, that's, wrong answer okay let's mm -hmm. find like what does work um so there's there's definitely a lot of that um but yeah no i i, I love that project and that was an unofficial music video uh i did it because i liked the song and i had the idea for the song and uh i just like i was not getting the opportunities to make something like that whether it be in live yeah. action or animation um so i just did it but that wasn't my first animated project uh that might like seem kind of misleading being like, how do you just start and like do that? Like I had one before that um, it's unreleased, but it's an, it's an official music video. Um, and that's with uh, Talib Kweli featuring Buster Rhymes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks man. I can send it to y'all like in private, but it's not, uh, it's just it might not. Get, yeah, please send it to it me. Might, it, might, it might get leaked on 786 Boulevard. Just letting you know if it does. <laughs> okay. Maybe I can't send it to y'all. <laughs> I actually don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but that was that was cool because I had like lots of mentorship because uh, I didn't do everything in that one. I was just a cinematographer in that one. And so That's there was right. like a full animation team that works in the industry. Um, so it was like a lot of learning their lingo and a lot of like Googling things right after they say it and writing things down, like random words. I'm like, dude, what, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's uh it's it's uh one thing i want to touch a, a point you said earlier which i, I missed i want to speak about before has you can jump on off this again um but it's a really uh, beautiful point about understanding your budget and working to that budget one thing i one film i always go back to and one of my favorite lessons in, in filmmaking life is jaws i think we all know the story of jaws uh, is that they turned up on set they wanted to start shooting the film and the shark wasn't there there was it wasn't working or something they couldn't use a shark so what does Spielberg do? He said, okay, instead of using the shark, we're going to get the camera in the water and we're going to uh, uh, do everything without seeing the actual shark. So in the final film, the actual shark uh, of Jaws, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the feature character, you barely see him, but because of the camera tricks and you know, the way it's positioned, stuff like that, you're given a sense of it being there. And I think that is the biggest lesson that I've like, taken on in, 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 in filmmaking is that appreciating your budget and understanding that it can be freeing uh, to not show things it can be freeing to be limited as opposed to having every opportunity you know I always love uh, thinking about insinuation in filmmaking it, it, it's the most important tool I think every filmmaker should use you can shoot a whole film uh, in a room you know and, 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 and make it claustrophobic and tense as opposed to having the whole city to work with you know I think that's a really important lesson that, that people should really uh, pick up on I feel like something that you know kind of extends uh, to every uh, aspect of life, you know, in, in, in life, you want to understand uh, the tools you have at your disposal, um, the path you're to be led on, uh, and you're, you're, you're really meant to understand that and, 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 and walk on that path. Maybe, maybe, maybe we went too deep with that point, but I just thought it was an interesting uh, philosophical uh, perspective. Hasnain, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what people need to understand is like, we can make like, like, for example, like you can make 10 films, nine of them are going to be failures, but all we need is just that one film to just like give us that passion. Right. So, you know, where you are today and like you mentioned, like you like what you're showing on your website, what you're showing in regards to like your reels and your, and your product is is very selective of what you want to show. 
but people don't see behind the scenes of like all the failures that we had, like including myself, including Nuri, right? We had like so many failures where, I mean, I was to the point where I'm just gonna, I was like, I can't do something. I'm going to quit. I'm going to just work finance and retire with like my 401k and whatnot, you know, but you know, the, the passion and seeing people like yourself, you know, I'm like being passionate, seeing Nuri like hustling to like film, like it gets my passion going too. And where we are today, you know, I guess my question to you is where you are today, what's one advice you would have given your younger self when you first started doing this, you know, where you are today, knowing that you went through all that failures, you went through everything you've been to, what's one advice you would give yourself five years ago, 10 years ago? Um, I think like the thing that really grounded uh, like my, myself and, and like made sure that I didn't completely overstress um, entirely was actually just the concept of like the whole idea of like we plan and we plan but Allah is the best of planners mm. just the fact that like everything is written and what you know if, if something bad happens it's usually for a reason like there's a lesson to be learned um, or it'll just like it just changes you as a person and it like allows you to to develop further um, so I learned that like a few years in, um, I think my first few years were, were definitely more rough in that sense of like lots of being hard on myself, uh, lots of, uh, like just overly just like thinking about imposter syndrome to the point where like, I would not work because I was like, who do I think I am? You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's just like the thing that shifted the way that I work. Um, and I like, I, I wish I knew that. And when I first started, but I also think that like people should just go through and learn those things, um, organically. Uh, yeah. like, I mean, every, like, there's a lot of people that would love to be in this industry that don't love like the journey of the industry, which, I mean, that's just like, you gotta be scrappy with it. Like you gotta be yeah. willing to, uh, do what it takes at the end of the day, we're just playing make-believe and we get paid for it. And that's like, it's, it's very cool and it's very fun and it's very interesting, but like, I don't know, you, you gotta like push through and, and take your time. And like, at this point, like I couldn't even tell you where I want to be in five years. Like I've right. lost any sort of like like goals was, are, are no more. That, that was going to be my next question. But carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, I, I don't even have like yearly goals. I don't have like five-year goals. I don't have decade goals because it's just like, you just, you keep doing it. I'm, I'm at a point right now where I'm like, I enjoy the process of like working towards being a better filmmaker. And like, it doesn't really matter to me, you know, what i'm filming if you know if i don't film a feature film in the next five years i'm not going to be super sad because i'll be learning something hopefully in five years i'll be better than i am today um so i think that's all that really matters i would love to shoot a feature film in the next five years but it's just like you know it's 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 one of those things that you, you have no control over it so why stress you know yeah yeah no you have five years to write a feature film bro Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because um, you know uh, over the course of the podcast we've been, we've been uh, following that my 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 failing screenwriting career uh, as, as as I've been wanting to write a screenplay for for, for the longest time and you you know what it is I think uh, it, it's funny you mention that because even with me recently I'm just like look like there's no rush you're not in a race you know uh, there's no uh, you have to make this by next year. You have to be here by by, by three years, by four years. I, I think it's it's a good um, mentality to have where you're kind of content where you are. You have the drive to go further, but you're going to use the opportunities that are given to you by God and utilize those opportunities to go further rather than, you know, uh, you being so arrogant to think that you know what's best for yourself. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm so grateful that, you know, I haven't gotten certain work till today because if i had shot certain stuff uh five years ago it would have been horrible and you know and and and, and the same rule goes for five years from now and ten years from now um so i think that just having that kind of you know um like you said enjoying the journey i, I feel like it, when you have a it's funny because this industry is one of dreamers 
you know, everyone who's in this industry wants to be an actor in Hollywood or they want to be a, a filmmaker. They want to direct a, a feature film or film a, uh, or film a feature film. It, it, it's almost, everyone tells you it's, it's, it's attainable, it's possible and it is, but it's also very unattainable. It, it's such a, such, a, such, a, such, a, such a stretch, you know? I'm sure, you know, we'll get there, you'll get there inshallah, but it, it's funny because it can make you forget to enjoy the moment now when you're shooting a commercial in DC, when I'm shooting something in Michigan, has to shooting something in New York. You know, you can kind of, uh, the, 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 the lust and the hunger for that Oscar or Golden Globe um, shouldn't override your enjoyment of what's happening today and your understanding of you, the steps you're taking now will get you there, wherever there is, if that makes sense. Um, I think that's a, a, a kind of good uh, uh, point to, to kind of keep in mind. Um, winding down, uh, Ahmed, we have this uh, kind of question for, for everyone that we bring on our podcast. This whole podcast really is about the relationship between art and spirituality. Um, I feel like spirituality means different things to different people, um, but I'm interested to know, um, you've told us a lot about your grind and your work ethic. Uh, what kind of role does your spirituality, whatever that means to you, play in your day-to-day -day, uh, working life, in your creativity when it comes to filmmaking? A hard question. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. I had a, I had a feeling you'd ask it though. <laughs> <laughs> ask it <everyone. laughs> um, So I, I used to, I used to like relate them a lot more one-to-one -one back when I was working at like faith-based organizations of, yeah, you know, film is my Islam and Islam is my film. And it's very much like that sort of sense. But I think over time, as I've matured as a filmmaker, um, I think like the root of it is like, I just enjoy doing it. And that's why I do it. Um, and Islam and spirituality come in through like tertiary means. So there's like the moral, like morality or sorry, morals that come with uh, being a Muslim that you bring on set. Uh, there's a certain ethic that you bring. There's a way to treat people. Uh, the biggest thing that has like, I attribute most to Islam is patience. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, as you both know, like being on set is a very, very hectic environment. And I think through and through Islam teaches us uh, to be patient, you know, in our day to day lives, we, we stop and we pray five times a day. That's like literally taking a pause. Um, so I think that has helped uh, immensely in, in filmmaking. And those are like the, the parts of Islam that I, I think about and that I pull uh, into filmmaking. Um, and I enjoy it. And it, it goes back to being like a filmmaker that is Muslim. You know, like, I don't think representation stops, you know, in front of the camera. I think representation behind the camera is just as important um, because we're the creators of the stories. And uh, yeah. Beautifully said. Um, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, if yeah, anyone wants so to much, reach out to you, uh, find your work, uh, where can they get contact? Uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's Ahmed Asad 4 uh, pretty much everything is Ahmed Asad 04 uh, and then on my website. Nice one. Ahmed, thanks so much. Take care. Thank so. you. Thank you.